Hello, this is Jeffrey Kirk. Several years ago, I hosted a series of interviews called the Web Genius Summit. This is one of those interviews. Please note that any links provided in this recording are likely no longer useful as intended. Products mentioned may or may not be available, but lessons discussed in this video still apply. With that, I hope you enjoy this abridged episode of the Web Genius Summit. Well, welcome everyone. Now, today is the last interview of the Web Genius Summit in what I'm going to start calling Volume 1. We're going to pull together a bunch of ideas so that this series can be an awesome level of value for you. To do that, today we've got Brian McLeod on the line. Brian is a direct response copywriter, sales trainer, and creative marketing consultant in Miami, Florida. Brian was the co-founder of one of the largest new product development firms in the U.S., he grew that company from a startup in a spare bedroom into a nine-figure business with more than 200 employees and well over $100 million in sales revenue. Brian's work has reached millions of consumers with direct mail packages, mailed millions of times across the world, television advertising broadcast on every major network, and publicity campaigns featured in national publications for more than a decade. Brian is now focused on helping local businesses and independent entrepreneurs develop world-class creative marketing strategy through private one-on-one -on -one coaching and professionally directed one-hour weekly mastermind groups. Welcome, Brian. Anything you'd like to add to that intro? Wow. Um, you know, that was a great intro. I guess maybe the only thing I would add is uh, cool dad. I think I'm probably one of the cooler dads of an awesome fourth grader. So Awesome. Uh, I, I like that in my bio as much as anything. Uh-huh. That's great. Thanks for sharing. You bet. All right. Before we get started today, I would like to announce that we're going to do things a little bit differently on this call. We're going to take your questions whenever you have them instead of waiting until the end. Also, Please hang on until the end of today's call. There is a concept that we're going to be going over that you, you may have heard of it or maybe not, but it's something significant you can use in your business, no matter what your business is, to add some good ongoing revenue stream without any upfront cost. So you really got to hear about this. Well, without any further ado, Brian, let's dig in. Yeah, I sounds great. <laughs> okay. I often find it's interesting how people got their start, you know, how they moved from where they were to where they are now, and, and I think your path is kind of unusual. So would you share with us what you were doing before you became a more serious business person? Sure. I, uh, I, I get this question quite a bit. I think people really resonate with it. I was a professional musician for pretty much the first half of my life. And that's really where I learned about marketing was through the process of marketing my band and my group. We were touring and traveling around trying to get a record deal. We recorded a string of independent releases and essentially had to build an audience, grow a fan base, and develop a, you know, a machine of marketing for ourselves because, as most people understand, the music business, it's tough. You've got to really hustle to try and get attention and to get get anything going. So that's where I learned about marketing was the process of promoting and developing our band and audience base. And so that's that was how I got my start into marketing originally was promoting that. I had an opportunity when I was 26, my boss at the time who had been a significant mentor for me in sales training and business in general uh, approached me right about the time that my band was sort of breaking up and said, listen, you know, I'm, we need to start a new business together. We need to start this company together. You want to do this thing with me? And to me, that was just like perfect timing. It couldn't have been better. So I jumped on that and cut off all my hair and began that whole <laughs> new adventure, you know, a whole new chapter. And so then that took me on a whole new path I never could have imagined uh, nice. at that time. And, and that's, so that's how it began, really, was... Uh, from music, you know, the guerrilla marketing is absolutely, you know, the trenches of the music business. So that served me well into a startup operation, you know, growing a brand new business and getting it rolling. Mm -hmm. Now, in the bio, I mentioned that you started up in a spare bedroom and grew that into a nine-figure business. I'm assuming that you didn't just wake up one day and, bam, you had a huge <laughs> business. Um, there must have been some steps in between. So how did you make that transition from your spare bedroom to... 200 plus employees that's a great question we you know we, it wasn't one day i mean we made significant headway constantly and consistently but it takes time to grow 
a business of substance and operation. It wasn't like we just launched and then had hundreds of employees. We did a lot of bootstrapping in the early days, and frankly, that's one of the ways that I learned about a lot of my business strategy and things that I teach and things that I share with my clients is through the process of trial and error and figuring out what, you know, what didn't work back then. So how we did that was uh, incrementally, step by step, just adding the little pieces and components that were necessary to give us lift. Small hires, uh, instrumental little people. First, first hire we ever had was a customer service person, and shortly thereafter we hired somebody for the production department. But prior to that, it was us, you know, and we worked our butts off. That's really how we did it. But ultimately, within three years, we had become the dominant leader in a mature national market and mm. just kept growing from there. How many years did you say? Three. It took us three. three years to become the dominant leader in that market. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it was. It was, it was impressive, and it didn't feel like it because, it, again, it's incremental improvement. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like this big transition where, like you said, you woke up and you were doing this thing. All of a sudden, we sort of realized, holy cow, you know, we're kicking some butt here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's, that's what's really forged my belief in incremental improvement in business rather than trying to go for these huge paradigm shifts, but rather steady, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, improving and getting better. Yeah, that's a good point. I know oftentimes as business people, we see uh, other businesses out there that are making it big and, you know, wonder, oh, how can we do that? But we forget about the process. They didn't land there overnight either most of the time. There is a bunch of steps. Sure. And I mean, look, that's not to say you can't strap yourself onto the back of a rocket and take off because that happens Absolutely. too. But, but it's uh -huh. rare, okay? Mm -hmm. That's rare. Just like people don't typically go see some band in, uh, you know, on stage somewhere and suddenly offer them a recording contract. Those are stories of legend. They're fun to hear. They're fun to tell, but they don't happen all that frequently. It's much more common that you hear about people who work hard and consistently and focused uh, and over time reach their goal. It's not the sexy story, but it's the doable story. You know, mm -hmm. something that yeah. everybody right. can do. Right. Well, one of the reasons I've got you on the line with us today as an end to the Web Genius Summit series is one of the concepts that you kind of promote is an integrated approach to marketing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll spend a little time digging into that. But could you start off by defining what you mean by integrated marketing and what those basics are? Sure, absolutely. I think it's an important concept for people to latch on to because it's so powerful for your business. Integrated marketing to me is a process by which you take all of your marketing communications and you tie them together as a system so that they're all working together in concert with one another. Each form of communication has its own form of natural leverage. And when you use it for that purpose, obviously it's going to work well. But when you tie it in with other forms of communication, you improve the benefits that the other form gets. For example, email and direct mail. Each stand on their own legs as their own tool in communicating your business's marketing message. But when you tie your email and your direct mail campaigns together in an integrated way, you give each one a lift in a certain way that they don't normally get. For example, mailing out a package of information goes out to the customer and they receive it. If you just wait for your response and it is what it is, it's going to be what it is. When you have an email campaign designed to lift that response, you can improve that result. But most people think of them as very discrete channels, and they don't cross those lines often, or at least not often enough, and not with enough planned attention. They tend to just treat each one of these different channels of communication as its own thing. And what I teach is how to tie those things together in a way that makes all of them work better. And when they all work better, what you find is you get a compounded effect that just creates much, much better results from everything across the board. Everything you're doing winds up working better. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, on these Web Genius Summit calls, what we're trying to do is help businesses that they already have a business. In, in most cases, we do have entrepreneurs on here that don't. They're just thinking about their business. But in many cases, we have people who have a business that are just trying to figure out how to do better online. So we've taken a look at a number of things on these calls with regard to structuring your business better, writing better copy, and then a lot of different social media things and blogs and search engine optimization and paid placement, you know, lots of different things that can all work, I guess, standalone. Each yeah. of them can have an effect. 
And certainly the Internet, it's a big thing. It's on everybody's mind. And you can also take the mindset that, oh my gosh, there's so much there already. If I just look at the topics we've had on the Web Genius Summit, it's overwhelming. How can we do all this? So you start to wrap yourself into the Internet and think, well, maybe I should dump making phone calls, or maybe I should dump direct mail to save myself some time or save myself some money. But I think what you're saying with the integrated marketing is, no, that's not the case. You'll have more power if you're using them together. That's exactly what I'm saying, Jeff, is that, and I understand. First, let's just be clear. I get it. I know what it's like to be overwhelmed by everything that has to get done and all of the overwhelming choices that are out there. And I certainly understand the allure of trying to send it all into the digital space and get rid of all of the people-oriented stuff, the actual real dirt world marketing, like direct mail and picking up the phone and calling people. The truth of the matter is that what we can get rid of is the old way of thinking about those things and approach it from a new angle. And when we do it that way, you'll find that it doesn't have to be tedious. This is just simply approaching it from a different perspective. You can think about direct mail as a means of supporting your existing marketing efforts rather than this drudgery that has to be done. I don't want to send this out. I don't feel like dealing with these things. I don't want to add the cost of doing a direct mailing. Well, would you like to do the cost of achieving a 20 or 30% conversion rate on your sales? Mm -hmm. Most people would say, yes, I really would like that. Okay, well, let's make that the goal and realize that things like picking up the phone with a plan, with a strategy, mailing out postcards after a successful sales call that takes just a split second of time to drop a little 37-cent postcard in the mail that says, Joe, it was great talking to you. I can't wait to get started. Give me a call as soon as you get this. That makes the phone ring. That closes deals. That lifts your response and gets things done for you. So integrating all of that together is not difficult to do. It's not going to add work on your plate of significance. What it's going to do is liberate you to get rid of the things that don't work and just simply do the things that do work better. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So you've mentioned a number of different things. You mentioned direct mail, picking up the telephone, email, or you also threw out the word digital, which I'm assuming you mean is basically anything Internet related. Kind of, yeah. Email and web. You now we've got social media. We've got blogs. We've got the line has blurred so much in, sure. in the last couple of years. But, yeah, I, I tend to view that as digital communication. Okay. So tell us a little bit more of each of those and maybe what they're best used for. That's a good question. I think each one of these tools has its own relative strength. We mentioned this earlier. For example, email, you know, your priority with an email is really to get eyeballs and clicks. The email is not an appropriate venue for trying to do the heavy lifting of selling in most cases. You know, there are no absolutes. So, you know, I'm not preaching the gospel here. I'm simply saying, as a general rule, email is something that we read quickly, we scan quickly, and we're looking for something of interest, and then we click on something. Hey, check this out, Jeff. This is really neat. I think you'll like it. Check this out at this website. Click. Eyeballs and clicks. That's our priority. So if we use that leverage, if we stick to that natural strength that email has and apply it to objectives that we want to obtain with our direct mail that we're sending out, like getting people to pick up the mailed out package that we sent or getting them to read or watch a video that we sent on DVD or pick up the phone and call, same thing with direct mail. Direct mail is the perfect platform for informing and educating our customers with a large amount of content and to deliver actionable materials, things like forms that they need to fill out, quote requests, thing documents that need to be signed and sent back, so forth. These types of actionable materials, that's the natural strength of that communication channel. So we leverage that. That's how we send the stuff that we want to get back from them that creates an action that creates profit for us. And when we use direct mail and we use the mail system to get people to our website to go watch a video that we've created that's going to help them make that decision. We're leveraging the strength of that. When we send them informative papers and little brochures and different extra sales collateral that helps support the sale that's being made on the website, for example, in a very common modern time, a lot of sales are made online. Well, by sending something in the mailbox that supports that decision, it helps them do that. You're in a space where most people are not playing anymore. 
Okay, most businesses are simply not mailing very much at all. The decrease in competition for the mailbox is just giving you better leverage because people are not as inundated with the junk mail as they used to be. Have you seen how thin magazines are these days? Yeah, no uh, kidding. People are just not mailing like they used to. Well, what would happen if half the world stopped emailing? Do you think more people might get your email and read it? Because that's what's happening with direct mail. you got a much better shot at being paid attention to, and mm -hmm. certainly the channel works well if you plan it well. Now, when we get to the channel of phone sales or in-person sales where you're actually communicating face-to-face -face or person-to-person, -person, naturally this is the perfect channel for follow-up with a customer, for fact-finding and building a rapport with the customer and asking questions and finding out more about their situation. And, of course, it's really the best place to close deals, to close sales, to get an agreement to purchase or do whatever it is that you want your customer to do. So by sending your communications to that point where you can have that conversation with the person, either in person or over the phone, you're going to get more agreement from people to do what you want them to do. And so so many people just kind of run from the phone and run from the face-to-face -face meeting with clients or customers. It's just a wasted opportunity because, again, the closing ratios, the conversion rates, if you will, are exponentially better in that arena than they are in just a pure digital play where people talk about sales letters, the average conversion rates of 1, 2, 3%, a 5% conversion rate is considered really excellent. Mm. Well, you know, in <laughs> typical sales environments where you're dealing with people over the phone or in a face-to-face -face selling environment, 10 or 20% close ratios is much more average and normal. So think of it that way. There's a way that you can apply that to what you're doing, and you'll see that kind of lift in what you're doing. So it's an integrated approach where you're trying to tie it all together. You're trying to move everything in a way that makes everything work better. Simply a quick phone call to follow up with somebody when they mail in the package to say, hey, we got everything that you sent in. It looks fantastic. Have you been to the website and checked it out yet? Will you go check it out and give me a buzz back or shoot me an email? Thanks, Joe. Great talking to you. That took a minute. Mm -hmm. But it gave you a huge, huge lift compared to sending that as an email, didn't it? And so people just need to think sometimes that there's a new way that they can approach the way that they market their business. And it may not be something that they're comfortable with or something that they've done before, but that's where all the big benefits are. That's the difference between getting the million-dollar business and a hundred-million-dollar business, quite frankly. Sure. Makes sense. So if we're considering these different methods of communication then, and using them all, does it change the way someone is going to implement a method? And I guess what I mean is, if they're starting to use email to sell, but now you're saying that maybe they should send out a postcard or something else and pick up the telephone, are they going to start using email differently in this process? Or would it change the way they use their website or what they say on the phone? You know, I guess this thinking about integrating change the individual function of these things. That's a great question, and it really just depends. It depends on how people are already doing things. Most of the businesses I work with, yes, it does change things for the better, exponentially so, and mostly just because people have never really given it that much thought. They just have their own habits of, uh, and ways of doing things, and mostly based on convenience more than anything else, the way they like to do them or the way they've always done them. Hmm. And so it doesn't have to change what you're doing. But it's certainly an opportunity for improvement in most cases. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I think in, in general, I'll just give you a tip. I alluded to it earlier, but I'll, I'll lay it out a little bit more clearly. This is a really, really powerful way to help offline companies secure a better response for what they're doing. Print up a branded postcard on typical regular cardstock, inexpensive cardstock, branded by that I mean your company logo and your corporate location and return address and so forth, but it's essentially a blank, okay, so that you have maybe a logo in the top left corner, your address and contact information along the bottom of the card, but largely it's a blank card. What you're going to do is print a stack of these. These are very inexpensive. You can get them done at, you know, a local Sir Speedy or whatever for virtually nothing. Have these in handy by your phone at all times, and whenever you get off the phone with a customer, you leave a series of messages for somebody you can't get in touch with, or you have a great call with a prospect or a new customer. 
you simply jot down a quick handwritten note to that person right then and there. Jeff, man, I really enjoyed this time on the, on the call with you today. Thanks a lot for having me. Best, Brian, flip it over, address it, and toss it to the side. Do that for the rest of the day as you go through your business day. At the end of the day, you collect your handful of postcards that you filled out, and you drop them in the outgoing mail. It drops in the mail. Two or three days later, that prospect, that customer, that person gets it, and it's a huge difference from the way most people stick out to them. It's like, a, you know, I don't want to say a sore thumb. It's more like, wow, that's great. I, I, I like talking to that guy. That was cool. I got a little note from him. These things are lost on us in this modern age, and they make a big difference. So a small little tip like that can make it just an enormous difference in getting people to pick up the phone and call you back. A prospect who you can't reach on the phone suddenly becomes available and calls you back. Well, if that makes you one extra sale a month, that could be worth thousands, even tens of thousands of dollars a year just by implementing such a quick little thing like that. Mm -hmm. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, that's awesome. And that's, um, that's completely offline. It is completely offline. And it doesn't have to be anything to do with the phone either. You know, it's perfectly acceptable if you have business that's done primarily online and you have your customers purchase records and you know where they live and you have their addresses and so forth. You can simply do the same thing there. That definitely stands out to get a package in the mail or a postcard in the mail when you're, you know, really stuck in an email or digital communication paradigm. That really stands out. People aren't accustomed to getting a lot of stuff in the mailbox from mm -hmm. others that they do business with online. Sure. So it's just a point of differentiation. It's a point of top-of-mind awareness, and it allows companies to just stay in touch, stay in focus, that you exist, that you're important, and that you're somebody they want to talk to and do business with. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I just want to remind our listeners that we're taking questions throughout the call today. So go ahead and ask questions. If they, they're popping into your head for saying something, you need more clarity, go ahead and just let us know what's up and... We'll see what we can do. Yeah, happy to take live questions. All right. Um, I, li I like the hot seat. Do you? Yeah, I like the Excellent. hot seat. Excellent. All good. <laughs> this is a question that's very related to what we were just talking about, and, and I was going to dig for an example that our listeners can relate to, and I think you've already given one there, so I could stop here, but I, I do want to kind of dig a little deeper, maybe change the scenario up a little bit. I know that some of the people listening in, they have their offline store, something that they sell physical products or they might sell services. And, you know, they've been running this business for years and they're trying to get online and do something online. What would be another example of something in the integrated marketing approach that they could use day to day that's going to help them out? Um, let's go to a digital example, something you can implement, uh, you know, in the modern era here. Yeah, with the, the digital. Yeah, that's stuff. what I'm getting at. Okay, number one, you create, <laughs> you can create social media profiles for all of your employees and the key co points of contact in your business, and allow customers to communicate and to interact with your staff and your employees in a social space that's still business centered. It's not maybe their personal Twitter account or their personal social media space. It's really built around the business, but it simply allows them to connect in this new media, in this new realm. Another thing that can be done is simply creating videos. Let's say you're, uh, you're an insurance agency and you've got uh, all of your customers there and they you know, are typically just looking to buy insurance from you. There's not a whole lot of connection, but they know who the staff is because they deal with you every so often. You create some videos of everybody in your office or everyone that they typically speak to or deal with. You put those up on the website, on your website, and you drive customers there with a series of emails where you meet the family. And you create a sequence that's designed to build affinity and bond and rapport. Now, hi, I'm Sheila. I handle all of the you know, claims adjustments, so if anything ever happens, you'll be dealing with me, and this is my desk and where I sit, and here's, you know, here's where I talk to you on the phone, and it just creates this huge rapport with the customer to, you know, wow, I know them. I feel like I really like these people, and this is what's lost in the modern age a lot of times, that personal connection. So you create a series of these videos, and they're just a pri they're in a private location on the website. It's not something that just the average surfer would find, but it's part of a targeted marketing campaign where you can simply mail, you can mail out a letter, you can mail out postcards, you can send out an email sequence designed to generate this. You can include it 
in as a ride along with the invoices that you send out or every month if you send things out to your customers like an invoice or a bill or something you can include a little flyer that says hey meet the family we've created this great new thing we'd love to invite you to take a look at and you know use leverage the tools that and, and their natural strength video and digital content is so easy to create now it's so simple to host and people can get it easier now than ever before it's a great way to do it excellent I, I do have a question that came in from the web it deviates a bit from where we were but we'll go for your opinion here the question is about SEO and uh, right. key, keyword searching tool. Somebody's wondering if you have a preference for a keyword searching tool like Keyword Elite or Market Samurai or something. Market along those Samurai lines. is my favorite tool. I love Market Samurai, and I really like the people at uh, what is that? The, I forget what the name of their parent company is now. Uh, doesn't matter. They, Brent Hodgson and uh, and Eugene Ware, just great guys. Their software is phenomenal. I've been using it for years. I also really like Micro Niche Finder. James L. Jones, James J. Jones uh, has created. I, I'm a Mac guy, so it doesn't work on my Mac natively. And that's why I'm, I tend to use Market Samurai, but Micro Niche Finder is another really cool tool for keyword searches. And quite frankly, you know, Google's good old free keyword tool, there's an awful lot of damage you can do with just that free tool from Google alone. Mm -hmm. And it just gets better over time. It's a little frustrating sometimes they change the interface around every so often. You have to kind of relearn it. But I think it gets more powerful with each of those iterations. So if you don't have, you know, an investment in keyword tools, you can start with the Google tool and get a lot done. But, yeah, if you're going to buy one, I would say your two choices are Market Samurai and Micro Niche Finder. Awesome. Yeah, the Google tool, I, I use that an awful lot. And it, right. You're, you're right, it just it keeps getting better. The interface changes, though. You'll log in one day and, bam, it's something yeah, different. Suddenly you oh, don't man. know it. Suddenly you're a noob again. <laughs> That's right. You're back to noob. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let me just check here. Good question. Something. Thank you, Let's whoever see. that was. You know, something I've heard you talk about in the past is businesses need to grow their brand and mm. becoming dominant in their market. And, and regarding your own business, you said in three years you were pretty much dominant in your market. Is the integrated approach to marketing the way to do that, or is there something else to it? That's a great question. When, whenever we speak branding, you know, our mutual mastermind partner, Ben Mack, immediately jumps to mind. And I've learned so much about branding from Ben and just the high-level stuff and, I, and I'm pretty good with branding I have an appreciation and affinity for branding that's uncommon for a direct response guy I really like it and I've, I've always loved advertising so I dig the image and branding stuff but when I think of branding and becoming a dominant brand in the market what I think it has everything to do with customer experience and Ben might disagree with that and that's okay <laughs> um, from my perspective, you know, I, I am a direct response guy at heart, and so in my world, you know, we deal with. Ooh, sorry, we got a nice Gulf Stream going overhead. Um, in my world, you know, we deal with one person, one action. Right. My mm -hmm. job is to get one person to take one action, each person to take one action. Where branding is more about moving big waves of energy, lots of people. And when Ben talks about direct response branding where you marry those two together. And I think that that's what integrated marketing does, is it creates a customer experience that grows the brand organically, that simply addresses the needs of the customer better, that understands and anticipates their wants and needs better than everybody else, that is one step ahead of the customer, so that simply as they're ready to take to step into what they want, you're already there. You're positioned well and you have everything they need. And integrated marketing absolutely does that because, again, you're meeting your customer where they're finding you. Their integrated marketing gives you the opportunity to speak to them digitally, to speak to them in the written word, to speak to them in person, by face-to-face. -face. Whatever preferred method they want to receive your message, you've got it for them. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's how you become a dominant leader in the brand is that you invite everyone to the party, more or less, as they come, you know, well, look, we don't force you into this box where you have to come into our marketing channel this way through this channel only, and that's maybe not the way you like it, but that's how we do it, so you're going to learn to like it. You adapt to that. That's why there's a reason why they call it a marketing funnel, because it's wide and then tapers down to a smaller opening. 
And so I think in terms of integrated marketing, getting your email and digital communications working and firing on all cylinders, driving people to the packages that you mail out if you do direct mail, picking up the phone and getting them to call, getting more customers to pick up the phone and call you, that's something that, frankly, a lot of businesses just don't pay enough attention to is getting people to pick up the phone. And they maybe hide from that. But there's so many cheap ways to do that. They're easy and inexpensive and not difficult to integrate into your business process. You can grab an account from Ring Central, have a beautifully professional virtual PBX set up that takes calls just like any real phone system for you know, like 15 bucks a month. Hmm. So it's not expensive. You know, and I think it's like $100 a month for an unlimited plan if you intend to use the heck out of it. So it's not cost prohibitive, and it's not even something that has to change the way you do business on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a matter of giving your customer every opportunity to talk to you, to communicate with you, to find you and do business with you in the way that they prefer to look and find and do business with you. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what I think it comes down to, is integrated marketing gives you a better chance at speaking to more people and that, in turn, creates your positioning as the dominant brand because you're everywhere. You're the one that everybody finds. Uh huh. Does that make sense? Yeah, excellent. Very much. Cool. Well, you know, I kind of touched on time before where, you know, there's all these Internet things and everything's new and you've got to jump on yeah. board and you're getting kind of squeezed from a time perspective. But let's take a look at it from a money perspective, too. Cool. Startups, small businesses are starting up. Oftentimes the problem is that they're underfunded. They just don't have the capital to do things that they might want to do. Existing businesses might have already spent more than they intended on things that didn't actually work out for them. And, you know, with where the economy's at right now, many industries just don't have the cash flow strong. So how does a business do all these things we're talking about, the integrated marketing, building their brand, whatever, if their money's already tight? That's a great question, and it's a reality for more and more companies. I would encourage people to realize that when business is down, when the economy is slumpy and saggy and wobbly, the companies who go out of business and fail are the ones who cut their marketing budget, who trim back their outreach. That's the time to push forward, not to get scared and pull back. When you pull back and retract, you're going in the wrong direction. You know, I mean, just look at what you're doing. You're moving backwards. So I would encourage people to, it's as much a mindset as it is anything else. Realize that when everybody else is doing that, baby steps forward that you take kind of look like big old long steps in a crowded marketplace where things are going well. So don't pull back from your marketing. Don't make the mistake of simply saying, well, we just don't have the money to do. You don't have to spend a lot of money in order to make improvements in the way that you reach out to your customers and use your marketing resources that you already have. Quite frankly, I would say one out of ten of the clients that I meet with and work with are really making full use of what they've got at their disposal. And most of my job in these situations is to point out to them everything they've already got to work with. We take inventory of all their assets, what all their sales collateral. What are you doing with this? Well, you know, you could take that same brochure that you're using and create a great email sequence out of that. Oh, we never thought of that. Well, that didn't cost anything, but it's simply a new approach, more content, more outreach and it doesn't have to be expensive you know when people say direct mail that scares people because there's a cost attached to sending a piece of mail and I have to remind people what, what's your average profit per customer mm -hmm. okay now add up how many dollars it puts in your pocket if you simply got one more customer out of every round of these than you normally do and virtually nobody loses money in that equation when they sit down and do the math Virtually nobody loses money in that equation, but I think it's just scary because there's a cost attached to it, and we've gotten to the point where it's so easy to just hit the button and send emails. Mm -hmm. and there's, well, you're spending money on your autoresponder account. If you're using Infusionsoft, you're spending a lot of money. If you're using AWeber, you're spending a lot of money. So you know, you're already spending money. The question is, are you getting the returns that you could be getting from it? Right. So that's maybe not the answer people want to hear, but it's the answer they need to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're right on with that. 
Good. Switching gears a little bit, at the beginning of the call, I told people to hang around. They were going to get into a concept that can create a new revenue stream for them. And this is probably a good time to start digging into that because cool. we're just talking now about spending money. If we've already got people thinking about integrating their marketing, let's give them an opportunity, a model for some extra bucks. So yeah, right. why, why, them, why don't you tell us what... Let's make some money. Let's make yeah. some money, right, Jeff? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so what am I talking about? What am I leading you to here? All right. Well, what we're talking about is masterminding and adding a mastermind group, paid masterminds, as a back-end offer. Now, Jeff, you and I mastermind weekly together. We're members in a, in a one-hour mastermind group every Tuesday. So it's an incredibly important part of my week each week, and I think in general I'm not going to promote the notion of masterminding. I think everybody, for the most part, understands that masterminding with others is a great and powerful thing for your life and your business. Sure. What most people don't understand is that it's a really great customer experience tool as well, and it's one that can be very, very profitable for you very easily. We did a promotion at the end of last year called the One Hour Mastermind Academy where Ben Mack and I and some other partners taught people how to bolt on professional mastermind groups as a back-end service. And it was incredibly well received. We got just a tremendous amount of attention from a lot of the major heavyweight online personalities and, and well-known marketers because they immediately said, oh my gosh, if you're teaching all these people how to do this, do you think you could get one of your students to lead some mastermind groups for my people so that after they buy from me that you guys could run a mastermind group for my students? And that, see, they get it. You know, it put dollar signs in their eyes instantly. They understood what the potential is. And so what I'd like to do is just try and make sure everybody else understands that anybody can do this. It doesn't take product creation. There's no product creation because there's no product. It's essentially adding a checkbox to your order form or an upsell process or a post-sale follow-up that says, hey, you want to get the most out of what you just bought from us? Come join a mastermind group with us of seven like-minded people. Spend an hour a week, seven minutes with seven people once a week and make sure that you get the absolute most out of what you just spent your hard-earned dollars on. We'll make sure that it works great for you. It's an incredibly easy sale to make because people generally want to get more value out of what they buy. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about is adding back-end mastermind groups in a very simple, easy-to-follow way. It's not complicated. It doesn't cost money to do. We talked about money being tight a minute ago for a lot of businesses. The great thing is... It can be done absolutely free. Freeconferencecalling.com is 100% free service to use, and it works great for something like this. You've only got seven people on the line at a time. See, it's not like you have to have an extensive webinar account or a big professional teleseminar account. It's a simple bridge line, a simple conference call line. You can even do it on Skype. So bottom line is it's inexpensive to run that. You can use Google Groups to create a little mailing list so that everybody can mail amongst each other in the group. Quite frankly, we don't even bother with that, do we, Jeff? We just no. hit reply no. all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not complicated or complex unless you make it that way. But it's something that's incredibly valuable to people. And it's a thing where most people, most of the marketers I know and work with, they put so much time and energy into that front-end sale, that first sale to the first customer. There is never going to be a more expensive customer for you than a new one. And if you're able to extract more value for each of the customers that you bring in, you're going to see a massive exponential leap in the profits that you take. The front-end sale is often not that profitable for people, but when you tack on $97 a month for three months, or 197 a month for three months, or a one-time $495 fee to participate in a mastermind group. Suddenly that value per customer shoots way, way up, and that changes your whole profit equation by doing that. And, you know, it's not uncommon to see as much as 30 or 40% uptake on these offers. So, yeah, wow. that's what we're talking about today is, is mm -hmm. uh, back-end mastermind profits. And I think you've said a particular phrase a couple different times and I think it's a key thing to point out you mentioned profit per customer and a lot of people don't think in those terms they think in profit per sale or profit per item or profit per hour things yeah. like that right. and it's hard to quantify 
adding on something like this if you're thinking in those kind of terms. But if you're thinking in terms of profit per customer, then you're just trying to maximize the dollars coming in from an individual customer over time. Yeah. And then this is a great way to extend that. It's the lifetime value of your customer that creates wealth, that creates hugely profitable and life-changing businesses for people. And this is not about a get-rich-quick kind of push-button riches system. This is simply a way to add leverage to your business very efficiently that you can start doing right away. There's nothing standing in between you hearing me tell you about this today and you offering this to your customers after we, eat, we all eat some barbecue this weekend for Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> you spend the weekend eating some good burgers and hanging out with friends and family, and next week you put up your first mastermind group offer. That's how simple it is to be able to do. You simply add it to your business mix and allow your best customers to pay you more money. Because quite frankly, Jeff, you know, what people often do is underestimate. They base their decisions based on their lowest value customer. Well, my customers aren't going to want to spend that money. You're right. Some of them won't. But, you know, if one of them does, isn't it worth being able to say yes to them to allow that customer who wants to give you more money to do so? If one out of ten wants to pay more, why should you pay attention only to the nine who don't? They don't want to give you any more money. Why do you want to pay attention to what they're saying when there's one out of ten of your customers who say, boy, you know, if you just – would do one more thing for me, I, I'd like to give you more money because I really like what you do. So that's what the mastermind group is all about, your very best customers allowing your most profitable, your best customers to give you more money. And that's what we talk about in Backend Mastermind Profits. It's an interview. It's a 48-minute interview between myself and one of my partners, Brian McElroy, where we really just dig in to how to do it. And Brian's a master at this stuff. Brian's really, really good at running these mastermind groups. He gets a thousand, sometimes two thousand dollars a month to create these mastermind groups. And they're really very profitable and they're very easy for him to do. And he makes a very compelling case for why you need to allow your best customers to give you more money. That's cool. Hey, if you don't mind actually a couple things here. First I want to give out a web address. There been a number of resources that Brian has mentioned through this call, and we'll try to get them out there for you. WebGeniusSummit.com slash next, N-E-X-T. We'll get those out there. There's not much on that page right now, so you'll have to wait till after the call. But any integrated marketing or masterminding resources or other things that were mentioned in the call, we'll try to get them there. Yeah, I know um, we have a PDF for them, right, Jeff? A PDF of the integrated marketing, a, a, mass, a, a mind yeah. map that I put together for yeah. everybody. Yeah, and we'll have that out there. It's not out there yet, but it will be. Cool. Also, if I can just ask a few questions about the masterminding. One thing you mentioned earlier on, you mentioned a one-hour mastermind call, and then you said seven people for seven minutes. The seven people, seven minutes is part of that one hour. It absolutely is. For Seven people for seven minutes is part of the one-hour mastermind construct, which I give all credit to Ben Mack for really putting all of this together in the contract. And, you know, Ben is a great mastermind director, has taught me an awful lot about how to efficiently run these things. People often are a little afraid of mastermind groups because they feel like maybe they imagine them, they might be a big time suck. But, Jeff, you know, unsolicited, I'm turning the tables, I'm interviewing you now. <laughs> um, masterminding, is it, is it efficient? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Does it blow you away how much you get done in seven minutes, in seven measly minutes? Right. You know, the focus is on one person for those seven minutes, and with everybody trying to help out during that time, it's amazing. Do we often end up relinquishing the remainder of our seven minutes because we've gotten so many good ideas? That does happen, you bet. So it's weird. I, get, I know. You know, it's like until you experience it firsthand, it can be hard to sort of internalize. But seven minutes, it feels almost like an eternity sometimes in this construct. So the one-hour mastermind construct is a very, very efficient model, and that's the best thing about it. It's one hour a week, seven people come. We open with a round of gratitude where everyone expresses something that in that moment they're grateful for, which helps open everybody up and put us all in the right mindset for a mastermind. And we just simply say something that we're grateful for in that moment. It can be as simple as, man, I'm really glad the weather's nice, to I'm grateful that, you know, my wife is okay, she went to the doctor, whatever it is. It's on your mind at that minute, and it gives you a, a sort of sense of being receptive to a mastermind. And then we go around the group. We do seven minutes. Each person gets their seven minutes. We set what we call a SMART goal. 
for the week, which is a specific and measurable action that's realistic and time-bound. A specific and measurable action that's realistic and time-bound. A SMART goal. And we simply announce if we completed our SMART goal or not from the previous week. No story, no drama. We just simply report. Did we do it or did we not? Yes, yes I did. No. no, I didn't. And each week we then set a new SMART goal for the following week, and that gives us the accountability and the sort of plan moving forward. And we ask our question of the group. It's all there is to it. It's really not complicated to have a really efficient, really productive mastermind in one hour a week. Yeah. So how does um, a business, one of our listeners, they've got maybe a brick-and-mortar operation, how do they go about implementing the mastermind idea with their customer base? That's a great question, and I think there's a lot of really creative ways that they can do that. One of the things people can do is they could have a live mastermind group once a week in their store. Let's say you had an archery store or, I don't know, a hunting store or something where you sold guns and ammo and hunting stuff and fishing stuff, and, you know, you have a bunch of enthusiasts who love the latest gadgets and stuff. It would not be difficult at all to have a weekend mastermind group, one, two, three sessions even where you spent three hours on a Saturday having anywhere from 14 to 21 different customers coming in for these three sessions, and you run these three mastermind groups where everybody comes in, they sit down, they talk about what's working for them, what's not working, the newest things, and just get a lot of great information and networking and experience out of what they're buying. They love buying the stuff. That's why they keep coming to the store to buy it. So you're giving them an opportunity to participate with other like-minded people who are just like them. And we love to work in groups of people who are like us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just a human reality. We love to be around other people that are like, well, we like going to concerts. Hey, we're all fans of the same artist. Wow, isn't this cool? You bet it is. And we're all just happy and having a good time at the concert because we're all there with that same central theme. And a mastermind group is very similar to that, except that it's much more focused and result-oriented on the individual. So you could have a local mastermind group in your area. You could do a telephone mastermind group three times a week. All of these things are possible for you. It doesn't matter whether you're a brick-and-mortar store or whether you're a pure online commerce store. It makes no difference. It's the same thing. Customer is the customer. You're just coming together around some idea. Right, and if you can do it locally, all the better. That's even neater. Uh -huh. That's something you can't do when your customers are, you know, come from all over the world. But that's just an extra point of leverage you have in your favor if you're a local brick and mortar. But it really doesn't matter because it's all rallying around the same concept, which is either improving our lives in some way or getting to use some service or product better, getting the most out of it. Let's say you're you know, a, a home improvement place or a hardware store. You could have a mastermind group for different types of things like roofing, uh, you know, remodeling, bathrooms, whatever, kitchens. And it could be a fixed-term membership where it's a three-month mastermind group where it's 12 sessions in total, four, four weeks each month for three months. And they come in, and through that 12-week period, they figure out how best to remodel their kitchen. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, awesome. And, I mean, I'm just coming That's I'm great. ideating right off the top of my sure. head. There's a, I could just do this all day. You can do this all day. And it, you need to stop, if you're listening right now, and trying to figure out how to work it in. Think about your business. What does your customer want out of what they buy from you? The mastermind should be about helping them get more of that out of what they buy from you. Yeah, and you've got some tools that our listeners can get access to, and uh, I'll have some links to give out for that. You know, I think also one of the best things that people can do if they're considering running their own mastermind is to participate in one. That Absolutely. way they get to see firsthand how they work, and then they're basically just duplicating a process. So I'm thinking we could probably put together some mastermind groups with our listeners if they'd be interested in that. I would love to do that, and absolutely we will. I'd be more than happy to facilitate that to help put uh, mastermind groups together of Web Genius Summit customers who want to try and get the most out of this really unbelievable program you've put together. Jeff, I want to give you a good pat on the back. You've got some of my favorite marketers and some of my favorite people, some of my own mastermind partners are in this call. Ben Mack, you, David Deutsch, Eric Stafford, the, you know, we all mastermind together. And so, you know, like a third of your Web Genius Summit is, my, <laughs> is our mastermind partners. Uh, that just goes to show you the power of the mastermind. And it's just such a great program, and there's so much actionable material. I mean, geez, with David Deutsch, what a fantastic, phenomenal A-list copywriter. And, you know, Ben's ideas are mind-blowers a lot of times. 
So I imagine that everybody who's been following the progress of this might feel a small sense of overwhelm, like how do I put all of this into action? How do I take all this stuff that I've learned and not just internalize it but externalize it? How do I turn that into money for me and for my business? And I think a mastermind group for Web Genius Summit customers would be a fantastic way to do that, to get everybody you know, on the same page who experienced the same thing and can help one another you know, network and put it into motion. Yeah, good. So, yeah, yeah. If, I'm happy to reach out and, and make that happen for people. Sure. We'll figure out a way to do it, and I'll be in the email contact with everyone and cool. see what can happen. I like it. All right. Well, we're coming up on the end of an hour, so we'll get into what I like to call the last question of the day. Uh, I always return to the purpose of the Web Genius Summit where I'm trying to help people put all the pieces together so they can do better online. And today, Brian, you talked about integrated marketing and adding masterminding to the mix of a business, and both of these are very powerful concepts and an awesome way to end this series of Web Genius Summit calls. I think the integrated marketing helps pull in the concepts of the last three months and, and what all these other geniuses have had to say, and then cap it off with masterminding to give our listeners something really special, something they can use to generate more cash. And this might be tough, maybe it's easy for you, but putting you on the hot seat again, what's the most important takeaway from today's call? What can our listeners do right now, even before they head to dinner on the East Coast or before they take that next client phone call if they're on the West Coast? What's something they can do now that's going to position them better for tomorrow? That's a great question, and that's a great exercise, Jeff. I'm going to suggest that the most important thing you can do right now, and pretty much you can do, period, is to get a pad of paper and simply jot down all the different things that come to your mind and just consider for a minute, put yourself in the perspective of your customer. Imagine that you are your customer and you are approaching your business. What do you want from you? as your customer? What do you want out of that relationship? What are your biggest wants and needs? And then as you do this exercise, and don't censor yourself, just jot them down, let it flow, get that list going, you're going to start to see a couple of them really resonate. These are big ones. These are important ones. Those are the things that you need to focus on and figure out how best to serve that customer and build your customer experience around solving those big ones for your customer better than anybody else in your market. That's how you become the dominant leader in your space. Awesome, Brian. Thank you very much for that. You bet. Well, to add to your next step, something also that you can do if you haven't done it already is to grab the entire series of Web Genius Summit Volume 1. We had 12 scheduled interviews, and we also had a bonus interview, dozens of great ideas to move your business forward, and if you missed any of these calls, you might have missed the big one for you the one that makes a big difference in your business. So now that the series is complete after today's call, the intro pricing is going to be going up, so you'll want to get in before that happens. I'm going to send you a reminder as well, but this is the order of things that you should consider doing now to get maximum value. Grab the mastermind information that Brian presented first. It's very inexpensive and can make a big difference for what you're doing. Second, load up on the Web Genius Summit interviews. And then third, join a mastermind group that's going to help you put all those things together. You'll learn about masterminding in first person, and you'll be able to implement and bounce ideas from the Web Genius Summit interviews off of the other people and all move forward together, taking great action that drives all of your businesses. So that's my recommendation. And with that, we come to an end. We're going to have to end the call here. Before anyone leaves, I want to give out a couple URLs again, webgeniussummit.com slash next. That will have absolutely everything of interest that we talked about today. Brian, it was a pleasure having you on the line with us. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to be here. Oh, man, it's been an honor, Jeff. I'm, I'm pleased to share the space with you and with so many smart marketers, and I appreciate everybody listening in appreciate the one question we eked out of the audience today i guess everybody was <laughs> a little shy but that's okay i had a great time and i thought it was a fun call so thanks a lot for having me that's good yeah an hour went by real fast it does for everyone else listening in i really appreciate you being here too and thank you for participating in web genius summit volume one watch your email for upcoming announcements and also information about volume two and have a great evening